Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Tech Talk. Uh, doing a bit of a troubleshooting video today. Um, uh, troubleshooting my son's computer, it's not turning on. I was going to do a CPU upgrade video because he has a uh, AMD Ryzen 2200G. And uh, so I was going to be upgrading with this, the um, Ryzen uh, 5 3600, pretty popular CPU right now. Um, but anyways, this computer won't turn on, so I have to troubleshoot that first before I can do the upgrade. So uh, basically he's been having a few issues uh, this past month where the computer wouldn't boot up fully. It would get to the MSI logo and then you just see something spinning and that would be it. Um, but that just happened uh, randomly. So today, the, it's the 2200G, uh, it's a 4 core, 4 thread processor. And uh, I think it's got a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz. So I did apply, uh, before I did the, I wanted to do the upgrade, I wanted to see if I could do a bit of a mild overclock for him, see if I could eke out any more um, performance. So I had it at 4 gigahertz, all core. Um, the memory is 3600, but this is a um, Zen Plus architecture. So this is part of the Zen 2, or no, sorry, Zen, yeah, Zen Plus architecture. And um, it, it doesn't like fast memory speeds, and it's had a lot of first gen Ryzen had issues, second gen Ryzen was better, but it had some more compatibility issues. So I've never really seen a Ryzen or a Zen Plus CPU that can do more than 3000 megahertz on the memory. Um, so I've had to downclock this memory from 3600. I got it stable at uh, 3000, and the timings are factory 18, 22, 22, 22, and 42. So I was able to get those to 16, 18, 18, 18, and 38. So it was working perfectly fine, and it was yesterday that I did the mild overclock to about 4 gigahertz. Three, four hours playing games, no issues, uh, layers of fear, um, some Fortnite, uh, Roblox he likes. Uh, it was perfectly fine and uh, I want to do some benchmarks today because I wanted to show you guys what this CPU's performance is in relation to after the upgrade. And so I went to the BIOS, I put the settings back to default, well for the CPU anyways, I left everything else. Um, and that was it. Wouldn't turn on anymore. Um, so I've already popped out the CMOS battery, tried to reset the, uh, the CMOS. Uh, it's not turning on. Um, it does get power, which tells me that the power supply is working. Um, I just can't see it being the CPU, but it might be. Um, and the motherboard, I don't know. It, it could be the motherboard. I have um, picked up another motherboard just in case. It's uh, the same motherboard, M uh, MSI B450 chipset, uh, Gaming Plus Max. His is the Gaming Plus, not the Max. Not sure really what the difference is, I haven't read up, but I wanted to grab a board that was extremely similar, um, just in case I do have to replace it, hopefully not, that I could just pop it in and do a direct replacement. Um, I mean, they had, I got this a can of computers, there's, you know, a lot of boards were on sale, but it's just easier uh, if your board dies to replace it with something at least with the same chipset, and uh, if you can get the same board, that's a lot better because it makes for replacing the part uh, ten times easier. Uh, so hopefully I can get this back up, and then uh, I'll do another video of the um, the Ryzen upgrade and show you that. Um, but anyways, yeah. So uh, I've received the memory already. Uh, I'll show you what happens when I uh, turn this thing on. Um, the power. So you can see, I mean, everything's getting power, fans are spinning, but there is a, you can't, you can't see it here, let me pull this forward, let me show you guys the, uh, there's some diagnostic LEDs in here, they're by the um, 24 pin right there, they're a little too small to read, or oh, well to pick up on the camera, but it is um, boot, VGA, um, DRAM, and CPU. So, I mean, obviously they fire, it's supposed to go and light up in sequence. That's not happening. Um, I mean, they do blink initially when you turn it on, but it's super fast. And when I've, every time I booted this, I've watched that a few times uh, when the, the system's healthy. And um, I believe it's a CPU or the boot that stays on. Um, so that's not happening. But I can't imagine it's the board. Um, I mean, the system, 
is pretty dusty. I've never had dust cause an issue with the system, but I've heard about it many times. Um, so I will give this a bit of a dusting. And then, uh, I mean, the system sits on the floor. You can see the dust in there. It's gross. Um, Got to get the system cleaned up a bit and see if that helps. Okay, I gave it a quick dusting. Uh, don't touch my dusting job. It's horrible. It's, uh, needs a really deep cleaning, but I just wanted to uh, put some compressed air directly on the motherboard to see if that would help. But um, it's still getting same reaction. Lights come on, no boot. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, pull the video card. Um, I know this is good, but I just want to see if it'll boot off the onboard video. Um, I'll try that first. Okay, I got the uh, main uh, G, uh, the GTX card pulled out. I'm gonna try the uh, onboard video just to see if uh, that changes anything. Though I doubt it. <clears throat> Not same thing. Um, currently, I, I did pull out one of the uh, memory sticks. Um, that is a good troubleshooting thing you can do. Is just uh, if you're having boot issues. Uh, you can attempt to boot with one stick just in case one's bad. Um, I would try with one stick and then alternate and put the other one in just in case the one stick is bad. So one thing um, <clears throat> I mentioned about the, the, the power supply, if this thing wasn't turning on at all, um, it would most likely be the power supply or the motherboard. It would be two things that would cause uh, this issue. Well, not this issue, but if it didn't turn on at all. So. Um, you can test the power supply by doing the paperclip uh, technique where you, uh, I think it's, well it is pins 4 and 5, um, but don't quote me on that, I'm not liable for your stuff uh, if you blow something up, but um, it is pins 4 and 5. Um, they say it's the 4 and 5, it's the green and black, but all these cables are black now anyway, so um, just Google it, don't take my word for it but it is pins 4 and 5 um, when the actual clip piece is facing towards you it's 4 and 5 from the right but again don't take my word for it, google it um, yeah so looks like I'm gonna have to swap the motherboard in this thing uh, kinda stinks, wasn't looking forward to that but I did pick one up just in case so um, I normally, I mean, if, if you were building a system uh, from the scratch, um, you could pull out the board and just run it with the CPU and a RAM stick and pull out all the other components, disconnect your SATA drives, disconnect everything else, fans. Um, because if you're starting from scratch, you could have a short, maybe there's um, <clears throat> an extra standoff that's touching the board. So you could have an issue like that, and that's where I would pull the board out and put it on a, you know, anti-static surface, just run it with the least amount of components, no fans attached, just the CPU, one stick of memory, no hard drive, no nothing. Um, if you have onboard video, use that. Otherwise, make sure you, you, know, you know you have a good video card, uh, test it with that, and um, that way you can narrow it down and see, okay, now I'm testing it outside of the case and see if you get boot. In this case, I know that this was working inside of the case. It's not a standoff issue or that a screw's fallen in there. It was working perfectly fine until I went into the BIOS, changed it from um, 4 gigahertz, set the CPU back default, and it will no longer turn on. So it's probably an issue with the motherboard. Could be the CPU, I doubt it, but I'm gonna do a motherboard swap right now 
and see if that fixes it. I have tried, like I said, reseating the um, resetting the uh, CMOS a number of times. It hasn't helped. Uh, I thought maybe some of the settings got gunked uh, up. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so I will get to that right now. See you in a minute. Okay, so I got it to work. Um, see here, it has posted. So basically, <clears throat> I undid all the uh, connectors here. Let me show you. So um, I undid all the connectors, all your uh, USB, um, video cards out. I got one stick of memory in here. I pulled out the... Um, 24 pin and also the 8 pin which is a pain and then I just um, I did pull out the CPU and uh, I receded the CPU so after doing uh, that stuff I put this on one stick of memory in and seems to be working so memory has uh, defaulted to its uh, normal frequency uh, 2133 which is the uh, JDX standard um, Ryzen 3 3200G um, it's right now running like I said off the of Vega graphics but at least I know the boards could what happened I have no idea um, it must have been something with the when I it was overclocked and I just reset it to you know uh, default settings or the CPU took off the 4 gigahertz overclock and put it back to default so I'm not sure, but this makes me happy because I don't have to use that board, um, which would have been, you know, a pain to swap that out. I mean, it's it's easy enough to do these connectors, but you know, swap it out. I was hoping I wouldn't need that. So now, put this all back together and do the Ryzen 5 upgrade. Hopefully, I'm gonna see if I can get this. Um, I'll hook all the wires back up. Fingers crossed, still boots up. I'm gonna get into Windows, run some benchmarks with the CPU, everything at default, except for the memory. Um, I'll put the memory back to 3000. Maybe I won't go as tight as on the timings. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll run some Cinebench, uh, Heaven, see what kind of scores I got in here. Uh, stay tuned for my next video. I will show you what the Ryzen 3600 can do. Um, because it is this is a six core 12 thread processor currently the 3200g is a uh, four core four thread um, oh also like key thing like this CPU has four megs of cache which is you know next to nil in, in these days the Ryzen 5 has 36 megs so it's quite a substantial um, upgrade can't pronounce that word substantial <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah so this would be a pretty nice CPU. I've uh, seen a lot of the benchmarks already, so I'm going to be looking for looking at um, you know some nice uh, uh, FPS upgrade in his games. Anyways, uh, let me get this back together. Uh, I will show it to you as soon as uh, it's all up and running again. And yeah, I'll give my uh, closing thoughts on this. All right, be right back. Okay, uh, back. Uh, systems up and running as you can see um, Got both six memory in there um, So this time it worked out um, A lot of times, you know when you have these issues where the system won't boot you just have to, uh, to break it down You know like is the power supply, you know is the power supply is turning everything on um, But if it's not it could be the motherboard, you know sometimes You know you might have a bad stick of memory so you try one then the other um, receipt the CPU, receipt the memory, receipt the video card. Um, if you got a lot of dust, clean it out first. Um, but just breaking it down um, by component, and um, you know, definitely if you know your video cards uh, good, then you know, pull that out and uh, try booting off the onboard video. Or if you think it is a video card problem, same thing, pull it out. Um, 
you know, but often I, I haven't seen too many motherboards uh, die crap out. I haven't seen too many CPUs crap out. So, you know, uh, it depends if you're doing some serious overclocking and you think, you know, maybe over overvolt the CPU too much. Could be the CPU, but uh, oftentimes there's some protections built in. And uh, like I said, I haven't killed the CPU yet in 15 years, and I've done some pretty crazy stuff with them. Um, I've heard of CPUs dying, but it's pretty rare and common. Um, I suspect in this instance it could have been the BIOS that got hung up, maybe. Uh, I don't know why even pulling the battery out didn't do anything, resetting the CMOS. It's not going to just plastic. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why it didn't uh, turn back on even when I did that. It was, wasn't until I actually Reseated or um, pulled out the CPU, disconnected all the cords. But I mean, except for a couple of fans, everything's plugged back in. So I'm not sure what happened, but I'm glad it's working because I don't have to replace the motherboard. And now I can go ahead with the some benchmarking and the CPU upgrade. So I uh, hope this was helpful for you. And um, you know, if you have any issues yourself and you need some tips, uh, leave a comment below and uh, I'll try to get back to you. And um, yeah, see you in the next video and stay tuned for the CPU upgrade. Okay, bye.